ain't been switch. broke in a minute. Nah, nah, I tryna run these digits. Nah, nah, Put my little bro on the pin. Nah, nah, we hop out the car with extensions. Nah, nah, these niggas be pistols, they switchin'. Nah, 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 Playin' with bro, then you go on the mission. Me and my niggas, we all on the mission. Focus on money, ain't worry about bitches. All right, y'all. So we're back with another video, man. And this one, we're going to be checking out um, RRQ Hoshi versus AP Brand. I'm actually interested in this game, bro. I've been hearing good things about how this um, this match went down. And we can start off seeing RRQ being very aggressive, getting some nice pokes on, um, on AP. I like that. Look at Kyle Teasy just roaming around. You can see him. All right, look at this. Looks like he getting ready to dive. Oh, no, he was just loading up just in case. Look at this. You can see, so you can see Banana getting some good vision. They made sure it was okay for a ride. So as you can see, the this team is just chilling. They're chilling here, getting information. He's doing a little bit more pokes to try to get them. Like, look at this. Uh oh, they they like Arguin's <laughs> Arguin's punishing them now. So now that Arguin hits level two, it's not as easy to dive because you got your skills. Like the Ruby has the skills now. So yeah, it's not that easy to keep diving at like he was doing. Okay. Okay, look at the Layla farming up here, man. Layla versus Clint. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that what? What did I just witness? Hold on, let me see what's going on up here in this top lane, because that was crazy. I don't know that Layla should be winning this lane, to be honest with you. I mean, the range can be crazy, but you're supposed to be able to, you know... I mean, Clint's passive is crazy, to be honest. Especially early game. Late game, Layla probably claps Clint. Like, could potentially clap Clint, for sure. But early game, I don't know about that. I think it really just comes down to position and how you play it, to be honest. Dang, uh-oh. Lilia might be down. Nah, got out of there. So they're punishing. They just they just made Lilia go back. Oh, wait, Lilia's going to go risk it. I don't know. She's probably going to die here. That's, oh, wait, she got a level four. But, nah, that was kind of a waste. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it looks like this is gonna be a free turtle for AP Bryn. Yeah, this is a free turtle. They lost the exchange. Nice. I like how um Brusco is out here just harassing and oh snap, Layla ended up getting clapped. I mean, there's not really nothing you can do. Layla does not have enough mobility to really combat that in any way, to be honest. They tried to get a nice little setup on Clint. I guess, um, let me see, what's cool for Rockin'? Oh, he has Flicker. And he brought, I guess he didn't have his alt to, to knock Clint into the wall, because that would have been a kill on Clint, but. Yeah. Oh, look at Clint Marksman, middle lane. All right, they got to set up. Set up to try to catch him lacking. Oh, look at Ruby frontliner. Yeah. Yeah, this this uh this tank is even on the run from Ruby, man. That's how you know Argwin's doing a really good job on tank right now. Okay, Ruby's all is down. My man. This Kufra just be loading up, not really... Not really doing nothing with that, man. You gotta, you gotta make a play. It looks like AP AP Brand is just real comfortable. They're real in control. They're roaming the map freely, and then when they roam, like look at this, when they roam the map and they decide where they want to go, he has to do the running away. Now it's good that he's getting vision and keeping his teammates safe, keeping his core safe so that they can farm. But at the same time, I don't know if this passive play style is really going to lead to the win. Now, the decision that they're making is stopping them from getting completely destroyed where you, you have information on what enemies are coming from. But you got to find a way to turn it around when you when you start, you know, getting down. Maybe they're going for late game, though. All 
Oh, yeah, look at CeCe. CeCe's just... Uh-oh, CeCe losing that lane, too. I hug her gold, almost gone. Okay. Okay, nice alt. That was a nice alt. No follow-up, though. No real follow-up. Oh, yeah, they're finna die. CC came up. Oh, they let CC survive. Okay, nobody's playing it too aggressively. No one's playing it too aggressively at all. They got they secured the turtle. They got CC low. Now CC has to go back and heal. Hey, see, AP Bren is really doing a good job focusing on the macro for sure. Like that is the difference. They're focusing on the macro. What happened was RRQ started the early game very, very aggressive. Like, that's what they're doing. They're playing super aggressive, but it's like it's not working on AP Bryn. They're they're not playing as aggressive. Like, look at this. Nah, that's wild. Okay. I like I like Skylar focusing on the tower here. Okay. That's nice. That that was that was good. That was a good engage. Uh that, that was a really good engage right there. So they got a tower out of that. Oh, but bot lane got a tower too. Bot lane got a tower too. Yeah, it looks like um AP is is dominating dominating the macro for sure. Who we gonna see? Who we gonna who we gonna see make a play? Uh oh, what we got? Okay, okay. Stop him from farming. He don't need farm. Don't let the enemy farm. Nah, don't do that. I mean, he kind of stopped your jungle from getting some farm though. Regardless, so I mean, he still. I mean, actually, no, he he don't win that. Uh oh. That was a good dive. That was a good dive. Look at how Ruby just left and left, let him get the kill too. Went straight for the objectives, going straight for turtle. Look at this. They focused heavily on the. Look at this. Now they come and take over like that. Oh, it's not. They still secured it. I like that. Nice retry. That was a nice retry. Let's see. Okay, I, that's actually the first time I've seen him actually dive to try to check bushes or something. <laughs> like that was the first kind of aggressive dive, but I don't even know if his team was ready to follow up. He's gathering some information, protecting the Layla right there so the Layla can push up safely. Yeah. Brusco, he isn't doing bad. He's actually not doing that bad, to be honest. He's not... Well, he's he's playing safe. So he's gathering the information that his team needs to try to come back. But he's not actually making many plays, to be honest. But Nor do I think his team is in a position right now to even make many plays. But some play has to be made. Man, look at the gold difference, too. That's crazy. It's almost a 5,000 gold difference. It's, it's wild. That macro, a slowly pick at, you know, pick at your team until y'all, you know, now they letting Layla free form in the bottom. I mean, that could be a poor decision. That could be a poor decision for sure. Layla Farmer, let me see. What what else that's looking like? Oh, she owe it too? Nah. That's not it. What the heck?
Now they that's a that should be a free lord. That out they, they bro that outplaying the Kufer is the Kufer. That's not that's not it. Like he's not good aggressively and actually. When it comes down to trying to actually use the tank to accomplish things, like he positions well enough and stuff like that, but okay, that's actually the best thing I've seen him do all game, and he couldn't secure the kill. They they couldn't secure the kill, but that was like a a really good move. That's crazy. Get me some water, man. Yeah, Brent is real. They're real confident now. They're real confident. They're not taking risk. That's that's what it's coming down to. They're not taking risk. I think that at this point in time, RRQ should be taking risks, and they should all be on the same page with taking certain risks. Like, they need a dive, a set, and an engage from Kufra, and they need to capitalize on it. Like, not just gathering information, because you just gathering, it's a 10K gold difference. Like, 10K gold lead, bro, you got to catch somebody. That means you're going to have to take a risk to catch them. Because if you don't take a risk, you're still going to lose. The only thing that could happen is you take a risk and it pays off. That's the best thing you could really hope for at this point. You all take a risk and it pays off because of your skill. But if you're scared to ever take that risk, you're just going to be gathering information and and you're going to see the enemy team clap you before they clap you. like. But, and it's good information that you see it coming, but that's not going to stop it just because you know it's coming. It reminds me of like the Uchihas, bro. And why no nobody else, why they thought Kakashi was going to be trash? Because even if you have a sharring gun, but you don't have the body capabilities to keep up with being able to use the Sharingan, it's, the Sharingan is basically useless on you in comparison to a real Uchiha. So that's why they was impressed with Kakashi because he actually was capable of, of you know, putting in work with it because he put in that work. You see what I'm saying? So just having information isn't always enough. Let's see, is Bruce Gold actually going to dive something? No, he usually doesn't. Like, that's what I'm saying. He usually doesn't. Nor, nor was his team ready to dive anything. And they caught him. Like, see what I'm saying? Like, that's why you got to take risk at this point in the game. Because, like, if you're going to sit up here and do that in their faces, you know, you got to dive at least because you now you just, you still died. You just didn't accomplish nothing at all. Like, there, there was nothing accomplished right there. Like, playing this defensively and playing this on the run that's that's not it. O and two, O and four, just O. O and two, O and three. I mean, to be fair, Lilia has multiple lives. Very hard to kill that. They don't have a single kill. That's wild. Nice pokes from Layla. I like Layla's position in here. Saved another tower. I like I like how Layla, Layla saved the tower. It's really all you can do. I mean, they can try to set up a play and carry the game through Layla. That's really the only play here at this point. But... 
I still think the other team is too fed for even Layla to make that crazy of a difference. But if anybody can still find a way to carry this game, it, it is a Layla. To be fair, Layla could wipe a whole team. But I think the enemy team is smart enough to know that a Layla could wipe the whole team and they're going to, you know, prioritize her. Yeah, she's the most dangerous. Like, Irad is 0-4 over there right now. So Layla's the really the most dangerous. And he don't put out a consistent burst. Like, Arad would literally have to catch everybody in his ultimate, which what are the odds of catching a full pro team in your ultimate where they can do nothing? I mean, if Kufra caught all of them together, knocked them into a wall, and then Arad alts, that would be a crazy moment. But what are the chances of that happening? Like, it's not like the enemy team is stupid enough to all stand together knowing that a play like that is what the enemy team needs to stay in the game. So, yeah. All right, so right now, somebody needs to split push bottom lane. They're going to be going for Lord. They know that they're going to be going for Lord. Yeah. <laughs> push up bottom lane. You're not securing Lord. There's nothing that you can do about Lord. Push up bottom. That's what they need to be doing. Push and bot. Or go and put, like, like see, what? Why, why is the split push not happening bot? This is what I mean. Like, they're not... RQ is not as good when it comes down to the macro. I don't know why he stayed over there just to get clapped. Maybe he was trying to clear that lane, but that wasn't a smart decision because the whole enemy team was over there on Lord. So as soon as they finished Lord, you know they were going to come through your jungle. That was an obvious call right there. And check out how the bottom lane isn't pushed up at all. You know, the bottom lane isn't pushed up how it should be because the team, I don't know what they were doing. They accomplished nothing. You never give something for nothing. They gave away Lord, and they got nothing in return. That's why the macro is so important, man. And, and it looks like, look at this. They're, they're good mechanically, and they're, but that's not enough. That's not enough. That's a good defense against Lord, though. But it's not really enough. Yep. Like, that wouldn't have even happened if they would have pushed that lane and took that tower while the enemy team was on Lord. Trade. Always trade. Macro is about trading. You never give the enemy something if you're not getting something in return. So if, you, if you're if you forced in a situation where you have to give away Lord, take a tower for it. Take two towers for it. Got to trade, man. Like, all they're doing right now is just prolonging the game. Like, this game is pretty much over. I would be highly surprised if RRQ finds a way to win this one because, yeah, that, that doesn't look like there's no way to me. They're not even really playing well enough, to be honest. It's the macro. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what a struggle is, in my opinion. Uh, she's dead. And there we have it, man. So yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised that that loss happened, man. I'm not I'm not surprised at all. Um yeah, RRQ didn't didn't play well right there. They didn't play well. They didn't play the macro well. Um they did they weren't going for objectives, you know. It's like yeah, you got to you got to go for them objectives, man. That's everything. That's everything, but yeah, we're going to watch the other games. We're going to see exactly what happened here, man. Let me know if you all enjoyed it. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.